The Georgian railways are very strange. Here you'll find everything from top modern European built trains from Stadler, a small fleet of discount express trains from China, and what we'll be riding on today, a classic local haul train from the Soviet times. So join me as we take a trip across the Transcaucasian Railway, looking at its experimental history, once being the railway with the most powerful DC electrification in the world, while we head up the steep Suromi Pass that was the first railway line to be electrified in the Soviet Union. It's time for a stunning journey through tough terrain as we make our way to the Georgian capital Tbilisi. Our journey begins in Georgia's third largest city, Kodaisi, on a lovely January day. Protecting the station is a monument of David IV, one of Georgia's previous kings. He is considered to be one of the nation's most successful rulers, often regarded as the architect of the Georgian Golden Age. But of course, we are here to catch trains, so here's the station building. And I have to say, this is not the most inviting entrance to a station building I've ever seen. But unlike some of the other stations in this city, at least it's not abandoned. Well, let's try and head inside. You'll find the entrance between the fitness center and some of the other shops. And the station has definitely seen more lively days. It looks like there used to be some form of bus company located here. But there's a small kiosk that's still open. And if you want to use the toilets, well, you probably don't because they are blocked off. But the station gets a bit nicer once we head up to platform level. Here we'll find a waiting area in pretty good condition, with plenty of seating, and it's nice and bright thanks to the large windows. This is also where you can buy a ticket, as the ticket office is located inside the waiting area. But I have bought mine online today, using the TRE website. Here you get a handy PDF, which you can just show once you bought the train. The station has two platforms, but the train to Tbilisi will pretty much always depart from platform 1. The station has one electronic departure display board, acting more as a digital timetable display, alternating between all the scheduled departures and arrivals. We'll today be catching the 11.55 bound for Tbilisi. And just as I was taking a look at the fairly modern station building, our train got shunted towards the platform. Our train today is formed of just two carriages, and a two-part electric locomotive. But our train will get much longer a bit later in the journey, as we will get combined with another Georgian railway service. This is a VL-10 locomotive, which was mass-produced during the Soviet Union with more than 3,000 units built. This one in particular was built by the Tbilisi Locomotive Workshop in 1972 and is capable of speeds up to 100 km per hour. In order to board the train, you must have your ticket and passport ready to show at the door. The train conductor will check this and then cross you off a list, and then you are free to board the train. All tickets come with a seat reservation, and today's train is fully booked, so make sure you sit in your assigned seat. Here we have a fairly standard coach, with 2 plus 2 layout, mostly airline style seating, but a few bays of 4. And here's my seat, all the way at the back. The train is very quiet on departure from Kudasi, but it will fill up as we make our way towards Tbilisi. Which we depart for right on time at 11.55. The track out of Kudasi is fairly slow and in bad condition. Despite Kudasi being the third largest city here in Georgia, this is the only long distance train to serve the city, once per day. And speaking of this train, let's take a closer look at the route we'll be taking towards Tbilisi. Train 17 leaves daily from Kudasi, with first stop being Rioni, where our train will be combined with train number 11 from Osugeti. We continue making stops at smaller towns along the route, as we wind our way towards the capital, where we are scheduled to arrive in Tbilisi at 1717 after a scheduled journey time of 5 hours and 22 minutes. 
The train will cover a distance of 217 kilometers, giving it an average speed of 40 kilometers per hour. Shortly afterwards, we are now arriving into Rioni, which is where our train will be combined. A locomotive is detached and runs right past us. It then approaches our train again from the back. We are then pulled away from the platform. to a siding just outside of the station. We then wait for the train from Orsogeti to arrive into the platform. We can then move back from the siding towards the platform we just arrived into, this time being added to the back of the train from Orsogeti. Just like that, we are ready to move on towards the capital as a much larger combined train. Which seems like a great opportunity for me to show you around the train. By the entrance doors, you will find the one power outlet located in each carriage. However, they didn't seem to work on board this train at least. Next up is my carriage, which is laid out in a standard 2 plus 2 layout. Not that much to say about it, apart from it could maybe use a luggage rack or two, considering they do a lot of long distance work. When's the last time you reckon this screen has worked? The next carriage is very interesting. Georgia has discontinued their domestic night trains, so sometimes they use them on day trains like this, where they are sold as standard seated carriages. Unfortunately, all the compartments were full at the time of filming, so I can't show you them, but just trust me, they have beds. There's even a small rest area for the onboard train staff. We'll now cross over to the carriages added to the train in Rioni. They are all identical to the one I showed you from all part of the train that I'm sitting in, so I'll just skip you right ahead to the toilet review. You'll find two toilets in every carriage, with a simple locking mechanism, the classic Soviet style water tap you have to press up, but it's working. There was soap in the dispenser, as well as toilet paper with the train flushing straight onto the tracks. Considering I've seen far worse in this part of the world, this is okay. And just as I was filming the toilet shots, we crossed over this cool bridge. We'll soon begin our climb up the challenging Surami Pass. Because of the mentioned gradients and the need to move heavy freight trains from the inland out to the ports on the Black Sea, the line was the first in the former Soviet Union to be electrified all the way back in 1933. This also means the line features many bridges and tunnels to navigate the tough terrain. Currently the line is being upgraded with new tunnels as well as refurbishment of some of the older ones to allow for higher speeds and to create a few shortcuts to speed up journey times as well. Once we have made our way across the pass, the line becomes a lot more straight, the train less challenging and we can reach some higher speeds. But most of you will probably not enjoy the entire journey from the window, so let's have a look at the seat. As you can see, they offer some recline, like the one in front of me. But I have definitely seen better days. Whatever padding they used to have is definitely gone and needs replacing. But I can imagine these have been quite comfortable back in their prime age. But now, 
the seat is in not that great of condition, and it's quite tough to sit on. But now for the other interesting part of this very important railway line. After the successful electrification of the line in 1933 at 3 kV DC, there was demand for even stronger locomotives that could pull even heavier freight trains. But instead of switching the line to AC electrification, which is a lot easier and effective at high voltages, an experiment was carried out on the line near Goe Station, a system that allowed the line to switch from 3 kV DC electrification to 6 kV DC electrification was installed. This was at the time the most powerful DC powered electrified railway in the world, operating for 10 years starting in 1969. However, in the end, despite it being fairly easy to upgrade lines to the higher voltages, it was found that there was little economical benefit to switching to the higher voltages. As it was found, the locomotives would become heavier to handle the higher voltage, as well as less reliable. Therefore, it was decided it was more beneficial to continue at 3 kV DC and explore AC electrification for newer lines with heavier freight trains. And with all that explaining done, we have almost made it all the way to Tbilisi, after a stunning ride through the beautiful Georgian scenery. And while the train might not be the most comfortable in the world, I certainly can't fault the price at just 9 lari, a bargain for 5 hours of train travel. Tickets can easily be booked online on the Georgian Railways website and usually go on sale about 14 days in advance. We arrive into Tbilisi's main railway station right on time at 17.17. .17. Thank you so much for joining me on this trip. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you're subscribed to the channel as I try to upload a new one every Sunday. You can also follow me over on Twitter at IntercitySimon. I usually post live from my travels over there, so it's a great place to get a sneak peek at what videos might be coming to the channel in the future. Thanks for watching.